Do you remember at the bottom of Thor, we had this little step sequencer where we could uh, run a bunch of notes and do a bunch of other things, but that was only for Thor and not, for example, available in Subtractor. So let me delete this guy and we'll bring over an instance of Subtractor and go all the way down to the bottom and bring over a matrix pattern sequencer and drag that below. And I'll just scroll up here. Now, if we run this, well, we'll just have a bunch of notes here. Now, what is our matrix actually doing? It's just spitting out a bunch of C3 notes across these 16 steps. If I was to paint a bunch of other different notes, then it would play those. You can switch octaves over here. So maybe I wanted to put a couple of high notes here. You can set your resolution over here. And finally, we have 64 patterns that can be stored. That's eight times these four letters right here, these four banks here. We're playing around with A1. And like most of us in Reason, you can right click or underneath the edit here. You can copy that pattern and then paste it into another pattern. You can also randomize pattern to get a very cool kind of sound. All of these features have kind of been played around with in Redrum and the step sequencer uh, also in Thor. So I'll go pretty quickly here. But the main thing to grasp is this, that the matrix pattern sequencer is all about assigning values to each step, which then leave and play something else. In this example, the matrix is playing notes on the subtractor. But how is it actually doing that? Let's flip the rack around. You can see that the output of the matrix is pretty simple. There's only just three different connections here. Right now, the default connections were made because we drag this matrix below the subtractor here. And those default connections are note and skate CV, which are brought over into our subtractor as sequencer control. That's why this is running all those notes. Let's tab back around here and we'll bring in another instance of matrix, but this time we'll hold down shift and drag it over. That way no default connections are made and we can see that by tabbing around, there's no connections that are made here. So this time, instead of sending out these values as keys or notes, let's send them out as a curve and I'll just paint in just a curve right here. We could also randomize this pattern if we like. So either way, we have this curve with a bunch of different values. What is that gonna actually a control. Hit tab and we can send out the curve CV here and bring it into any of these modulation inputs. So for example, I could make the connection here and drop it into filter one frequency of our subtractor. So if I turn that around, all of these values will be routed to control this guy here. Now we've kind of seen this before when we've looked at the modulation envelope, we've given that a destination parameter or the LFO here. We've basically seen this before where some sort of modulator has a target parameter that it modulates, but that's always been within a device. We've never really seen it before where one device modulates another. So let me tab that back around again. Check it out. All those curve values will go in here and sweep this frequency and we'll be able to actually hear this if we run this and I play a note. Now we're actually not hearing anything right now because we're not connected to our subtractor. I need to select that down here. And now I'll be able to play it from my keyboard. Well, we're kind of hearing it, but it's probably better if we bring that all the way down and maybe give it a little bit of resonance. We're still not hearing a big change here. So I could tap this back around and we could ramp up the amount of influence that this guy has right here. What about if we randomize this pattern? Now listen to it. Very cool. Do you hear that filter opening and closing with each of these steps? So the matrix can either play out note values that any connected synth will play or curve values that can be patched into, into any modulation input. Just about every instrument 
has inputs for CV and gate for notes or modulation inputs for curve values. Let's have a look at them all. In an empty rack, I brought over all of the instruments there. And if we tab this back around, go to the top of the rack, let me just hit L to hide these cables. Now the subtractor has gate and CV for sequencer control and all of these modulation inputs. You know what, the same thing with Thor, all of these modulation inputs, uh, our Maelstrom, the two samplers here, even Redrum have these inputs.